Hello students, this video is about the triangle sum theorem. It's the second lesson in unit two. We're gonna be talking about the relationship between the interior angles of a triangle, uh, which turns out to be the same for every type of triangle, regardless of whether it's equilateral, acute, isosceles, whatever the case may be. Let's take a look at the learning target. It is, I can use triangle theorems to identify relationships and determine unknown angles in diagrams. The triangle theorems that we're talking about is really just one, the triangle sum theorem. That relationship is going to help us determine unknown angles by actually solving uh, for unknowns. In the do now, it asks us to determine the type of triangle that's drawn below. And uh, we're determining it by scaling isosceles like equilateral, that's by its sides, and acute obtuse and right, that is by its angles. Pause the video, try this one out. All right, for this example, we were able to identify that it is scalene. It's got three sides that are all different lengths, so no sides are congruent to each other. If it had two sides that were congruent to each other, it would be called isosceles, and if all three sides were congruent, we would call it equilateral. In order to identify it by its angles, we identify whether it has an obtuse angle and whether it has a right angle. It turns out that this is an obtuse angle. It is between 90 and 180 degrees, so it is an obtuse triangle. If this angle were a 90 degree angle, then we would call it a right triangle. And if all three angles were acute, we would say it is an acute triangle. Moving right along, we'll talk about the triangle angle sum theorem, commonly known as just the triangle sum theorem. The triangle sum theorem states that when you take the interior angles of any triangle and you add them together, it will always equal the same thing. And uh, the triangle sum theorem states that the sum, that's when you add them all together, is going to equal 180 degrees. That means all of the interior angles of a triangle. So I'm looking at this angle specifically, and then this other angle also specifically, and then this other other angle also specifically. When we add up all three angles in any triangle, whether it be an acute triangle, an obtuse triangle, a right triangle, equilateral isosceles scaling, it doesn't matter. It's always going to give us 180 degrees. This is a fact in geometry. This is one of the most basic theorems in, in geometry that we're going to be using over and over and over again. In the example, it asks us to solve for x, and we're going to try to use the same theorem, the same concept, to try to solve for x here. Pause the video and try this one out, see if you can do it, and uh, then come back to see if you get it right. So in the first example, you could have figured out that these three angles all sum up to 180 degrees. You should see by now the way that we're writing out these problems is first identifying the concept or theorem that we're using, then writing out a formula that we can fill in. In a triangle angle sum or triangle sum theorem, we can say that angle plus angle plus angle is equal to 180. We identify the three angles, we substitute in 108, 47, and x, and then we just solve for x. Remember, identify the theorem or postulate write out a formula that you can fill in, fill in that formula, and then solve it. For number two, it asks us to solve for x, and it turns out that this works not only for when there are just numbers as our angles, our interior angles, but also if we have expressions as our interior angles. We can easily fill out the formula the same way and solve it just by using algebra. Pause the video and try this one out. All right, we're gonna fill out the triangle sum theorem the same exact way in this case as well. We're identifying all the three angles in the triangle and substituting them into a formula, which is simply angle plus angle plus angle is equal to 180. Then uh, substituting in here and combining like terms. Uh, not a big deal at all. Now keep in mind, this is gonna work for any triangle that you work on. So as long as it's asking for a missing angle and you have the other two angles already known to you, you're able to set up this equation and solve. All right, take a look at the check for understanding. In this check for understanding, it does require you to know a little bit about what the diagram is telling you. Keep in mind that it does only have two different expressions for the angles, but there's a third angle that you could figure out just by examining the diagram closely. It asks us to solve for x and the measure of the unknown angles, the two unknown angles. So uh, keep in mind, it's a little bit more involved than just solving for x. All right, go ahead and try that. Check for understanding. All right, as I already alluded to, you were supposed to find... Uh, the value of x and also the measure of the two unknown angles. And it's, as it says here, this is a right angle, which is 90 degrees. So I already know this angle. I'm able to use it as one of my three angles in the triangle sum theorem. Um, of course, we're going to find the measure of the two angles in another minute or so, as soon as we find the measure of, or the value of x. So we substitute the values into the triangle sum theorem. Uh, keep in mind, this is how I normally write it out by hand, right? I'll, I'll draw a little triangle rather than writing out the word triangle. It saves me about, you know, 0.2 seconds. 
Uh, anyway, we're filling out all of these values and saying equal to 180. You're able to add through parentheses. So I'm combining 2x and 5x to 7x, combining 1 and 5 and 90 to 96 respectively, and then solving for x. Now, uh, now that I have my x is equal to 12, I'm going to take that value and substitute it into these two unknowns and find their measures. Keep in mind that since this is a 90 degree angle, I already know that these two angles, these uh, unknown angles, are going to add up to 90 degrees because 90 plus these two would be 90 equal 180. So substitute them in, and that's just a little bit of algebra that you have to do. Try it out. All right, some simple substitution to get uh, 25 degrees for this angle and 65 degrees for this angle. And as a quick check, if I were to try to add all these three angles together, I would have 25 plus 65, which is 90, plus another 90 here is 180. It always works. Uh, your responsibility uh, now is to check this model problem and make sure that you know how to do this. Keep in mind there's a couple of uh, specific things that you have to know in order to do this problem, but it's not that bad. Uh, try this one out, pause the video, and then come back to see if you got it right. Think about the types of triangles we learned last lesson. All right, as a quick reminder, you should remember that the isosceles triangle theorem says that two congruent sides means that they're going to be two congruent base angles. And we can identify that this side and this side are congruent. They have that hash mark, which means that this angle is going to be a base angle, and this angle is also going to be a base angle. So they're both going to be equal to 52 degrees. Now that we have that piece of information, we're able to solve for x by using all three of these angles in the triangle sum theorem. All right, here you can see the triangle sum theorem written out. I write it like this with that triangle to save myself a little bit of time. Angle plus angle plus angle is equal to 180. So I substituted 52, 52, and 14x plus 6 into the equation. Some students ask, why am I not substituting y into the equation? It's true that y is the measure of this angle. However, if I'm trying to solve this equation, I'm going to need only one unknown in it. And I already have this x in 14x plus 6. So I'm going to substitute in the value that I already know. It makes it easier to solve this equation and get one single variable. Uh, so at the end of the day here, I get x is equal to 5. The question says to solve for x in the measure of each angle. So I have my x value, I have my 52 and 52. I just need one more angle here. An easy algebraic finish to this problem, 14 times five uh, plus six is 76. So one way that we can check to make sure that we got this right is to take 76 and add it to 52 degrees and 52 degrees respectively. 52 and 52 is 104 plus 76 is 180. So we must have done this right. All right, try this check for understanding. Again, we're trying to identify the important aspects of these triangles. Keep in mind that there are multiple triangles here you could identify. So uh, probably the best way to go about this is to label it first. So go ahead and annotate and label, and then come back to see if you got that part right. All right, check the labels here. Measure of angle A is 35, it's here. Measure of A, B, D is 25, it's here. And measure of angle C is 60, it's here. Sometimes in problems like these, you might not be sure exactly what to do first. Just look through and see what you can do. Um, I know that there are two angles in this particular triangle, triangle ABD. I'll highlight so you can see what I'm talking about here. This highlighted triangle ABD, I know this angle, I know this angle, and I can find this angle by using the triangle sum theorem. So that's what I will do first. All right, here's the triangle sum theorem in action. We did angle plus angle plus angle equals 180. We substituted in our 35 degrees and 25 degrees, and we didn't know this one, angle ADB, so we just used angle ADB rather than throwing in an unnecessary variable. Uh, that should be equal to 180 degrees all told, so we subtract the 35 and the 25 and get ADB is equal to 120. That's this angle here. We're looking for BDC, which actually exists over here. So what we can do now is use any of the theorems that we've learned previously to find this angle. And here's a hint. It's going to deal with the fact that AC is a straight line. All right, as you can see with the highlighting, I've identified that AC is a straight line, or line segments, I should say, which is split by uh, line segment BD. So I'm able to use supplementary angles or linear pairs, which means that this angle, the BDA, and this angle BDC is going to equal to 180 degrees when added together. So 120 plus BDC is 180, which means that BDC is 60 degrees. If I label this in the diagram, you should see something interesting about this triangle, triangle BCD. I can see that this angle, which is 60 degrees, and this angle, which is 60 degrees, are congruent. They have the same measure, which means that we should be able to find out this angle, which is angle DBC. 
1660 is 120, so the remainder that uh, that is left to make up 180 is another 60. So it turns out this triangle is a special type of triangle, which has all equal angles and therefore all equal sides. This triangle is equilateral. It wasn't asking us for that, though. It was just asking for the measure of BDC, and we found it. So big whoop. All right, uh, that was the video on triangle sum theorem. It is a very useful tool that we'll be coming back to again and again and again this year. Good luck studying.